Hi, this is Greg Van Cott, co-producer and co-director of photography on Walk of Death. Uh, I was brought onto this film by David Michael Feast, the director, a good friend of mine. He had seen some previous work of mine uh, on my other projects and he liked the uh, dark, uh, intimate and mysterious look that it was able to accomplish. And uh, I thought it was uh, a good challenge for me to work on a psychological thriller. I had not uh, worked on one up till this point. In terms of lighting, which is my uh, chief responsibility on this project, uh, was that we needed to maintain a dark, intimate tone. And in my opinion, the best way to accomplish that is not with big Fresnels or big rig lights that you usually see on other Hollywood productions. Uh, I wanted to do this all with practical lights, or incidental lights, as they're sometimes called, which means you have a table lamp that's about this big, or a desk light, and you can light an entire room with them. You can light actor, actors' faces with them, and I don't think you can really accomplish what I had attempted to do on this project using color as a psychological means to express uh, how the characters were feeling using color with gigantic fresnels. I was taught by uh, Michelle Hugo, that uh, he, a DP who has worked in uh, the business for 50 years, that you can use the smallest light. All you had to do would be go to, you just have to go to Home Depot, and with the right kind of bulb, you can use it as a bounce, use it as a fill, use it as a key, uh, and you can still maintain a good quality look with something that only costs you about ten dollars at most to buy at any retail store or any uh, supply store. I took inspiration mostly from DPs like Bradford May. Uh, he tended to use color in a way where it tended to um, express the psychological uh, mood of the characters. He would use reds to express anger and he would use blues to express uh, a sad, depressed, moody uh, situation. And another DP comes to mind is Stephen Goldblatt and Douglas Milsom are some of my uh, favorite uh, muses, so to speak, to use as inspiration. And uh, I think that um, using their concepts, their ideas, helped serve the story of these characters manipulating each other because essentially the lighting uh, is also taking on a manipulative effect. When I worked with uh, David, the fantastic thing about working with him is that uh, he was always collaborating, he was always willing to listen and anyone, any actor, any crew member on a film uh, comes to appreciate that on a paramount level and just an extreme level of gratitude and generosity, uh, at least that's how I felt working with David um, on this because he was always open to possibilities and new ideas. When you worked with uh, our other intrepid uh, crew members like uh, Angela and Pete Sanfilippo. Uh, Pete worked as a camera operator and as the co-DP and we worked well together. I was worried that uh, we weren't going to be able to uh, have a mishmash of, um, of uh, working styles because he was mostly handling the camera operation and I was handling the lighting but we did get that. Uh, uh, we, we were able to create this mishmash, this effect of two minds coming together. And I give him all the thanks in the world for cooperating, for tolerating my insanity. And uh, Angela is just a, a fabulous uh, producer. She was able to put things together. Everything came together on time. It was a, a uh, snap to it process. As a director of photography, co-director of photography, um, the possibilities, the possibilities of uh, creating something that people don't usually see. And I think every DP, every lighting technician hopes that they can do that. Uh, but it, material like this only comes around every once in a while. So I was very lucky to work on this project and uh, I'm glad I could be of service to uh, Mr. Feese. So I hope you enjoy the film and uh, I certainly enjoyed the experience of working on it, and I hope you enjoy uh, uh, watching it, and I hope you learned something from it, as I'd have.